Okay everyone, welcome back to the channel for another track guide on Gran Turismo 7. We're back at Sardegna A for the next round in Nations, driving the Suzuki hybrid car that got added I think a, while, a little bit ago. So yeah, this is actually a really fun car to drive. I do recommend you give this round a go because I found this car super entertaining, really enjoyable and yeah, a lot of fun. So hopefully I can help you find a few tenths of a second for your qualifying lap help you start a little bit further up this is a standing start so in general you do want to be a little bit further up but you know it's going to be an entertaining race also with that standing start and this track normally provides quite entertaining racing as well but yeah let's see if we can gain you as much time as possible remember to hit that like button subscribe to the channel if you find these videos beneficial and make sure you let me know in the comment section if it helped you out how much it gained you always great to read them comments and I'm going to try and see if I can give you as many pointers to give you as much time as possible. Now, this lap was done in about 20 to 25 minutes. I did it um, this morning along with the Monza lap. Spent about 40 minutes doing a mixture of both of them. So managed to get okay laps done for each of them. And hopefully we can you know, point you in the right direction of improving your overall time. So going into turn one, we're going to be looking for the 100 board. Now, you are going to break slightly short of the 100 board as we're about to see. So as you go past the 200 board, 150, you're going to break just short of that 100 board. Now, you're going to be breaking down through the gears into fourth gear and watch as we go into third gear. We're going to actually go into third gear as we come out of the curb. So using the full width for the track again in fourth gear and then down to third gear just as we come off the curb, rotate the car in, then back up to fourth gear before you get on the power. And that's because that will stabilize the car as you get on the power and the exit and carry a little bit more speed without having to upshift. Now these corners completely flat out. You don't need to worry about them. Just drive them flat out, stay to the apex and then work your way into this next left hand corner, which we're looking for the 50 board above our head there. Again, breaking fractionally short of that 50 board and just trying to keep the car nice and stable for you. So it's down into fifth gear and we're going to try and keep the car nice and smooth on entry. Now, you really ideally want to keep your left hand tire to skim the curb. But you can see as I go to fourth gear, I get quite a lot of rotation. I hit the curb a bit too aggressive, but luckily I managed to stabilize it. And as soon as we're in a straight line onto the brakes, um, we're pointing in the right direction here. Now, what we're going to do is down to third gear for rotation, then straight back up to fourth gear for that acceleration out of the corner and stability. And you can see you can really go aggressive with the accelerator with this car because it is four wheel drive. So you get so much traction on the exit. So now into the next braking zone, using the 50 board, we're going to break just past that 50 board. So make sure you're braking past it, not before it. And you want to get the left hand tire as close to the wall as possible. But you can see we're turning in quite late because we want to carry as much exit speed. Exit speed from this corner is so important because you're going to carry that speed all the way up the hill. So as you come into the apex on the throttle super early, power your way out and you can see you can get on the throttle so early with this car with the four wheel drive system and the grip that it's got and now you can see where the benefit from that is now you're carrying that speed all the way up this uphill section so if you get a good exit there you can gain a tenth or two just on the straight line exit speed now we're going to be looking for our next braking zone for the 90 degree left hand corner that we're approaching braking short of the 100 board you can see on the brakes quite early here it could break a little bit later now it all depends how you want to attack it i'm going to do this in third gear if you want to brake later and downshift the second and rotate it with a bit of a drift that is possible but i'm going for this smooth line staying in third gear taking quite a wide entry you can see again using the full width of the track and getting on the power super early so you can see squaring it off using third gear carrying the speed on the exit and that's the approach we went for this lap now working our way into this very next section is very very tricky this is probably the trickiest corner on the track there is two ways of doing this you can see i'm going to take a little bit of grass on the right here for the entry and then take it quite smooth and avoid doing anything too risky you can see there are two lines you can do for this track. If you want to go super aggressive and use the grass on the right hand side there to drift the car in, it is possible, but I don't think that's the safest way. I'm going to play it nice and safe, keeping it smooth, going down into fifth gear as we come through here. You see down to fifth gear, keep it nice and smooth, keep that left hand tire close to the, the barrier and we're not getting much of a drift going. This is because I think this is the safest way to do it. Now, like I say, if you want to go super aggressive and watch the top 10 leaderboards, they really do drift the car through there. But I find that a high risk strategy, especially for the race. So next braking zone, braking just short of that 100 board and making sure that you're staying to the right hand side of the track for as long as possible here because you really, again, want to concentrate on that exit speed. You can see I'm going to go down to second because I braked fractionally too late and we're going to try and drift the car in a little bit. So using second gear, then back up to third gear. You can see that drift kicking in and then on the power super early. Again, this car's got so much traction. You keep the foot planted to the throttle 
and just carry the speed out the exit. And again, like I say, that corner vital for your lap time because it carries the speed all the way to the finishing line. Now for the final corner, we're just going to slow it down here. You don't need to brake, but what I do do is give a little bit of a lift off the throttle. You can see gradual lifts off the throttle through the corner because you can understeer wide if you don't get it perfect. So I just did a little bit of a safety lift there. Maybe lose half a tenth by doing that, but for the sake of a track guide, just to get a solid lap in, I think it was, you know, it was worth showing you that I can, I do that sometimes. So over the line for a 1 minute 50.1, pretty solid lap. Can probably do a 49.5 to 6 if we put a bit of effort into it, but pretty happy with the lap. So let's watch it from the chase camera again. Watch how we use the full width for the track with this car and watch how early we get on the throttle with this car as well because of the grip that it's got. Really, really entertaining car to drive. I'm actually really looking forward to this race on Friday. I think it's going to be fun. It's going to be very hard to get any good points, but I think the racing could be really entertaining. So again, through this corner, you're going to see how I hit that curb and it unsettles the car a little bit. You don't really want to do that. You want to be a bit smoother through there. But what I did do is I got into fourth gear and really powered our way through that corner, brought that lap back to me a little bit there. And then for this left-hand corner, again, vital to get that exit speed. So again, turning in quite late, get into fourth gear, power your way through the corner. Again, super early on the throttle. This car's just got so much ability. I'm sure with more practice, we'd get more and more used to how early we can get on that throttle to get that exit speed out of the corner. And again, it's heading into that left-hand 90 degrees corner. This is all about getting the exit speed again because you want to get the car squared off. So staying to the right side, you look at the full width for the track that we use and then squaring it off, four-wheel drive, obviously you want to get the car squared off for a four-wheel drive car to get that maximum acceleration from the exit. Now this corner, again, you're going to see I play it ultra safe. I don't go for that risky strategy. I keep the car pretty settled there, not drifting it in, just keeping it nice and smooth and just trying to take the exit speed from the corner. Low risk strategy, but I think... For qualifying, you might want to go for that drift strategy if you've already got a bank lapping, you know, risk it if you've got a good, you know, a good bank lapping, you could go for it. But in the race, I definitely don't think it's going to be advisable to be doing that drift approach for the corner. Now, the top drivers probably will because they'll master it and they'll get used to it. But I just don't fancy risking it on that corner with this car. I'll probably end up in the barrier and spinning around with three seconds worth of penalty. So... Yeah, not for me, but hopefully that guy will help you out. Let me know in the comment section if it has. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so and hit that like button. It's always great to um, read the comments as well. So thank you everyone who does that. See you all soon. Bye everyone.